Si chine que de Mendara, ni Mercato Roneva na Pueda, you have made me to be part of this program. Can you begin to appreciate the Lord? Can you begin to appreciate the Lord at this moment? Begin to appreciate the Lord at this moment? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you, can you, can you, can you repeat after me and say, Oh Lord and my God, in this program, locate me with your blessings. Empty-handed. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, make it a prayer. Make it a prayer. Make it a prayer. Make it a prayer. That the Lord should locate you in this program with an outstanding miracle. That you don't go empty-handed throughout this program. Ah, ah, ah.
No power can hinder your healing. No power can hinder the touch of God in your life. No distraction. No evil hand of the devil can stop what God has prepared for you in this program. No power, Satan. I command you take your hands off the blessings of the people of God in this program. I command, I command satanic influence to be covered. I command satanic barriers. I command satanic siege. I command every satanic war against the blessings of people to collapse. Come on down. Una kata, manda ya mabula. Enda maria kapala kata. Una kata, manda rama. Uskali ya mababa. Linda masia kapala. What God has for us, most looking for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want you to declare now, this program is for me. Ah, you didn't get me very well. I said no for me. This program is for the pastor. This is not for you. Can you tell me this program is for me? This program is for me. Can you say for the third time? I am not going back empty. In the name of Jesus, if you better say it now, amen. We will not wait for the late commas. Because while you wait for the late commas, you punish the daily commas. We don't want to punish those at the same time. And we would like to dismiss on a reasonable uh, time. Okay? I hope you like it like that. Yes, That's why we are not waiting. On the show, you are also so you are not waiting. Praise the name of the Lord. Over the name of the Lord, you are not going to be here. Over the name of the Lord, you are not going to be here. We want to serve the food of God. So, before we, uh, before the next thing, we would like to we would like to hear from our Panasonic wife. Hallelujah. Panasonic. Sonasonic. Echo Center wife. Can you clap for them? Can you clap for them? We want to hear from them before the next year. Praise Master Jesus. Can you tell the person next to me that I will never be the same since I've crossed the grace of God? I will never be the same since I've crossed the grace of God. That is the one we have for you this day.
and their pastors doing well today in the ministry. Yeah. And when I can say you will be coming from one to this program. Hallelujah. Please let's celebrate it. Let's celebrate God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to bless God for all the organizers of this program and all the leaders in the church that are supporting our Father. May the Almighty God continue to bless you, continue to favor you, and uphold you in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. We lift your name Jonathan. 
There was a servant of Saul, Saul's family, named Ziba. They summoned him to David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And your servant, he replied. So the king asked, Is there anyone left of Saul's family I can show the kindness of God to? Ziba said to the king, There is still Jonathan's son, who is lame in both feet. The king asked him, Where is he? Ziba answered the king, You will find him in Lodiba, and the house of Machi, the son of Ami. So King David had him brought from the house of Machi, the son of Ami, in Lodiba. Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David, bowed down to the ground, and paid homage. David said, Mephibosheth, I am your servant, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him. Since I intend to show you kindness because of your father, Jonathan, I will restore to you all your grandfather Saul's field, and you will always eat meals at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you take an interest in a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Saul's attendant, Ziba, and said to him, I am giving to your master's grandson all that belonged to Saul and his family. You, your sons and your servant are to work the ground for him, and you are to bring in the crops, so your master's grandson will have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, is always to eat at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then said Ziba to the king, Your servant will do all my Lord. The king commands. So Mephibosheth met at David's table, just like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Mika. All those living in Ziba's house were Mephibosheth's servants. Verse 13, finally. However, Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he was at the king's table. He was lame in both feet. The Lord bless his spirit in Jesus' name. This nonsense must stop. I came to announce to somebody in this congregation and anyone watching us online that this nonsense around your life is stopping in this service in the name of Jesus. Look at your name and say, Neighbor, this nonsense must stop. Hallelujah. Tonight we are seeing part one of this nonsense must stop. And it is dash from sorrow to joy. I see God moving you from sorrow to joy. From sorrow to joy. From sorrow to joy. From sorrow to joy. In the name of Jesus. A lot of people are living in sorrows because of what the devil is doing in their lives. If you see where we read in Esther chapter 9 verse 22, we saw how the, the Jewish people were living in sorrow in the land of Shushan. But God turned their sorrow to joy. In Esther two, uh, 9 22, God turned their sorrow to joy. In John chapter 16, verse 20, we saw Jesus telling his disciples that they will be sorrowful and the world will be rejoicing. But he will turn his sorrows to joy for them. And we are learn in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 9, from verse 1 to 20, we saw Mephibosheth living the life of sorrows in Lodiba. The sorrow was so much until God intervened and turned his sorrow to joy. I see God replicating self in somebody's life here in the name of Jesus. I don't know the sorrows around in your life. I don't know what the devil has done in your life. I don't know what has happened over the years. I prophesy to you that in this meeting, God is turning your sorrow to joy for you in the name of Jesus. And every nonsense in your life is stopping tonight. Every nonsense in your life is stopping tonight. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, we are going to dwell more on Mephibosheth. I saw a man that was in royalty. A man of greatness. A man of great destiny. Yet, relegated to soul. When I look 
look at this man. I saw five dimensions of sorrows in his life. If you are writing, you will write five dimensions of sorrows in the life of Mephibosheth. And it is in the life of so many people today. These dimensions of sorrows. The first dimension of sorrow in the life of Mephibosheth was the sorrow of shame. Second Samuel chapter 9 verse 6. The sorrow of shame. The name Mephibosheth means the exterminator of shame. That is the meaning of the word Mephibosheth. You can double it. The exterminator of shame. So by destiny, Mephibosheth was to exterminate shame. Yet, his life was full of shame. By prophecy, you that is hearing the sound of my voice, God has destined you to exterminate shame in your life, in your family, in your society. But when you look at your life, your life is covered with shame. That was the case of Mephibosheth. His life was full of shame. His life was full of embarrassment. He was to stop shame, yet shame was stopping him. I came to announce to somebody that every shame in your life is ending in this service. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, every shame in your life is ending in this service. In Joel chapter 2, verse 26 and 27, Joel chapter 2, verse 26 and 27, God was speaking here. He said, my people shall never be ashamed. My people shall never be ashamed. In Isaiah 54 verse 4, Isaiah 54 verse 4, Isaiah 61 verse 7, Isaiah 54 verse 4, and Isaiah 61 verse 7. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. You shall not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. I shall not remember the reproach of the widowhood anymore. What? God is wiping away every shame. I don't know what has brought shame to you and your family. In this meeting, God is wiping it away. God is wiping it away. Say, my father, my father, every shame and reproach in the lives of my family, in the name of Jesus, I roll it away. I roll it away. I roll it away. When Joshua and Israel came to Gilgal, in Joshua chapter 5 verse 9, when they came to Gilgal, God told Joshua, He said, This day have I rolled away the reproach, the shame of Egypt from you. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 61 verse 7, he said, for your shame, you shall have double. I prophesy to you, receive double for your shame. 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 I don't know the shame, but double is coming to you. You that is watching me online, I don't know the shame, but double blessings are coming. I don't know the shame, but double blessings are coming. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen. I am not here to only preach. I am here for an assignment. Because in this meeting, destinies will change. In this meeting, we will have face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. In this meeting, we shall receive miracles. In the name of Jesus. The second sorrow in the life of Mephibosheth was the sorrow of deformity. The sorrow of deformity. Mephibosheth was deformed. 2 Samuel chapter 9 verse 3 and 2 Samuel chapter 9 verse 13. Mephibosheth was deformed. We heard that from Ziba. He was telling the king that Jonathan has a son whose name was Mephibosheth, but he was lame at his feet. That was deformity. He was deformed. A lot of people have different forms of deformity. 
Some are lame, some are blind, some are having different forms of deformity. Now listen, there is no deformity that cannot be handled by Jesus. Every deformity can be handled by Jesus. So I don't know the kind of deformity you find yourself. You could be physical challenge, you could be deaf and dumb. Whatever the deformity is, I want you to be full of expectations in this program. Because the expectations of the righteous shall be granted. Your expectations shall not be cut off. Your desires shall be granted. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Mephibosheth was deformed on his leg. He was made. Some people, their deformity is not lameness. Their deformity is liver disease. They are having liver disease. That's their deformity. Some of them are having fatty liver. That's their deformity. Some are having liver cirrhosis. That's their deformity. Some are having liver cancer. I'll be sharing testimonies to you in this program. The testimony is aimed at you believing that the God that did it for them is alive and can do it for you also. If only you can believe. Some years ago, an Indian pastor called me through messenger on Facebook. One of my friends on Facebook. And he asked me to pray with him that he was having a liver disease liver cancer, according to him. And we prayed. I was praying in tongues. He was praying in tongues. As we kept praying, after some days, his name is Pastor Cecil. After some days, he called me to give me the testimony that Jesus has healed me. That Jesus is alive. Yes. In this meeting, I'll be sharing my testimony. Because Jesus gave me a testimony that seven point something million could not handle. Yes. Jesus gave it to me for free. I'll be sharing my testimony to make you know that Jesus is alive. Yes. He's alive. Yes. He's alive. Jesus is alive forever. He's alive. He's alive, amen, he's alive, Jesus is alive, forever he's alive, he's alive, he's alive, Jesus is alive. And I was speaking with him on phone. He 
He said, I'm just coming from Anambra State for program. I'm on my way to Oka. Jesus has healed me. I am healed. No more dialysis. No more kidney disease. I don't know what the doctors told you. I came to announce to you that every deformity can be healed by Jesus. Every deformity can be healed by Jesus. One of my sons in Finland, his name is Ifai, he watches us online. If he knows that we are online, he will join this service. He's in Finland. I came to know him some years back. When he came, he's a footballer. When he came to the village in Imo State, during Christmas season, he woke up in the night to go to the toilet to eat himself. They fired him with that arrow. He slumped and fell in the, in the toilet and passed out. Was unconscious for days. So they, one of our members that went to the village in Imo State gave them my number and they gave me a call. As I was talking to them, the Lord laid it in my heart to tell them to carry him out of the village. They took him out of the village to overheat in Adam. They took him to one hospital there. And the guy could not wake up. He was dying. And the family members called me every December when in our family we do one week fasting and prayers. And we pray every in that fasting we pray nothing less than six hours. The, the prayer time is nine, nine hours every day for one week. Myself, my wife, my daughter is compulsory. Are you understand what I'm saying? And so we were in that season of prayer, so they called me to come to the hospital. I told them that sorry, I won't be able to come. We're having a program. As I dropped the call, God spoke to me. He said, if you don't go to pray for him, you will die. Which is what to kill him. So I was trying to give excuse. By that time my car had flat tire. And I didn't fix it because of the program. So I had to break and then call one of the organizers who was close. He came and fixed the tire for us and we drove down to the hospital. When I got there, I saw two pastors praying for him. In my mind, I said there wouldn't be need of prayers against these pastors are praying. And the Lord spoke to me, he said, You are equal in fellowship, but in the anointing you are not the same. So I didn't pray immediately so that they would not be offended. I allowed them to pray and go first. So when they left, I laid hands on him and began to pray. As I began to pray, I entered into the spirit and began to speak in tongues. As I began to speak in tongues, according to him, he said, pastors have prayed, but this prayer is different. He said, when I was praying, it's like in the realm of the spirit, I began to lose him from where they tied him. He said they were sucking his blood, they were sucking his blood. They would transfuse blood, they would suck away the blood. They would transfuse blood, they would suck away the blood. So for days, he was in coma. For days, he could not eat. But that day, when we went home, he woke up that day in the night. The next day, he requested for apple. He ate apple. And he began to eat, eat food. And I told them before I left the hospital, I said, I was with my wife. I said, we didn't come to only pray. We came to discharge you. We discharge you in the name of Jesus. Two, three days later, Ephraim was discharged. And the entire family came to our church to give testimony to Jesus, who is the healer. That same Jesus is here to heal you today. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And he is the same forever. I went into this story because of what happened this year also. He called me this year from Finland telling me that he was having kidney disease. He said he went to the hospital and the diagnosis showed that he was having a kidney disease. So they referred him to a higher hospital, a higher doctor. So I prayed with him and I said, go. It is done. They won't see anything. Hallelujah. As I'm, as I'm talking now, that diagnosis is on you. As you leave here and go to that hospital, they won't see anything. I said they won't see anything. In the name of Jesus. So he went to the hospital, I think they are like two hours ahead of Nigeria, if I'm not mistaken. So he went to the hospital around four or five, like I so he called me. But you can't believe what I saw. You can't believe what happened. What is it? We went and they, they ran another test. And the doctor was asking me, why did they refer you to me? 
Who gave you this result? How come? How come this result? He said, look at your result. You don't have kidney problem. I don't know what the doctors are giving to you. That deformities are being raised by the blood of Jesus. That deformities are being raised by the blood of Jesus. That deformities are being raised by the blood of Jesus. Even if you cannot see, begin to see it right now. If you cannot walk, begin to walk right now. If your liver is having problem, kidney is having problem, receive the right healing. In the name of Jesus. Some people, their deformity is heart disease. They are having palpitation of the heart. Jesus will heal you. I said, Jesus will heal you. I said, Jesus will heal you. Because some people, they are having lung cancer. Some are having colon, colon cancer. Intestinal cancer. Brain cancer. Breast cancer. Lung in the breast. In the breast, Jesus is healing you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Jesus is a healer. Some people are suffering from ulcer, peptic ulcer, gastric ulcer, and they are always on ulcer key. Jesus is healing you. Amen. I said, Jesus is healing you. Amen. Some people are having high blood pressure. Some people are having sugar diabetes. And they are always on glucophage and diarrhea. They are always on, on insulin injection. Jesus is healing you. I said, Jesus is healing you. Amen. Some people, their deformity is HIV. They are having HIV. And they are always taking telephobine or always on uh, retroviral disease. Uh, I'm sorry, drugs. Jesus will heal you. Amen. I said, Jesus will heal you. Amen. Some years back, a brother called Oyechi, a student of Abia State Polytechnics came to the church and met my wife and I in the office, in the office and said that I'm going to die very soon. He was so pessimistic. I'm going to die very soon. What is it? I have a child. We've gone from hospital to hospital and he said I'm going to die in no time. Do you know what is a very funny, very tall guy? He said, I keep imagining how long my casket will be. <laughs> Praise God. I'm preaching with this tonight because I know Jesus will do something in your life. Yeah. I know what he can do. And uh, we prayed for him with my wife. And I asked him to start. He's a member of another church. I don't do that usually. I don't pull people from their churches because of their challenges. Even one of them was in our church last Sunday, a member of Assemblies of God, who came with his own challenge. We don't do that. But I was led to tell him to go and hear the word because faith comes through hearing. And hearing by the word. So come and hear the word of God. So he kept coming and hearing the teachings and hearing the word of God. And one day I came to church on Wednesday. I was in church before service hour. So I was, I was speaking in tongues and speaking in tongues and I fell in the trance. And I saw the young man coming into my office from the reception. Coming into my office. And I woke up in that trance and I wore him a shirt. I wore him a shirt. And the trance comes. And I called my wife. As I went coming to church, bring social and so shirts for me, and then carry social and so suits, add them together and bring. So she brought it to me, and then after the service, I invited the brother in my office. I said, "Take." Is what am I going to do with it? I said, "Wear it." I just saw myself wearing you this cloth in the dream. In, I mean, in the trance. So it would be like a man to wear it. So he wore it. After some time, the Lord told me to tell him to go for tests. I said, bro, Nietzsche, go for test. He said, I'm afraid. I said, no, don't fear. Don't fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Don't fear. Go. It's a false evidence. So he went to that same place where they saw HIV. They ran the test, it was negative. They ran the test again, negative. And he came out and began to shout in the hospital. What's the problem? I am declared HIV negative. And they began to ask him, did you go to Pastor Sosa and Sosa in Lagos or Pastor Sosa and Sosa? They began to call me big names. And he told them, he said, no, there's one small pastor in Okibwe. 
I want to add it and say it is not in the weakness of the pastor, it's in the weakness of our God. Ay, 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 ay. I'm trying to remember this song by Nathaniel, Nathaniel Bassi. Oh, Binigwe. Oh, Binigwe. Why, can we sing it? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
from now to next year, you will have your baby. I don't like the amen you are shouting tonight. One of my daughters in church, I'm calling their names because they are watching the service. They used to be in the back, but they are worried now. She got married, faithful daughters. They came to Adia Poli, joined the church, served in the choir faithfully, and all of them got married. About four sisters, four of them, they got married. Before she got married, I was having the feeling that she would struggle with childlessness. I told my wife, I said, others, I'm not having this feeling, but this one, I keep having this feeling. So we kept praying for her. She got married, no children. No children. And the battle continued. The battle continued. The battle continued. They said it was five, uh, five run. They went and did five run operation. The thing continued. I went to Abuja for a program. And my father in the Lord was, they were praying for the food. I called her on phone. And the prayer was like 30 minutes. We we're praying. I prayed. After the program, uh, uh, when I came back in the month of June or July, I asked her, what is happening? She said, no, show. I said, Jesus will do it. As I'm telling you, that Jesus will do it for you. Yeah. And one day, after Wednesday service, as I came to the house, I was undressing to eat that shower. Her phone, my, my phone began to run. When I picked the phone, when I saw it, it was her name. So I left it, I took my shower. When I came back, came out, I called her. What is it? She started singing. Somebody is going to sing. I said, somebody is going to sing. She said, Daddy, I miss my period. You will miss your period also. I said, you will miss your period also. Another one was Sister Precious. She got married. The husband became tired and left the church. If man is tired, God is not tired. Keep waiting though. Waiting time is not wasting time. If you are waiting, God is preparing the best for the last. Don't be tired of waiting. Don't be tired of waiting. She took him and delivered the bouncing baby boy. Are you understand what I'm saying? In the month of May, this May, I went to preach in Assemblies of God Mission on their Women's Day. They had, they had a National Women's Day. So I was a guest speaker in one of their branches in Abba. As I was praying for the people after ministration, a woman came and by prophecy, the Lord began to show me that there were no children. I said, there are no children, there are no children. And I was told that she was a pastor's wife. So I didn't say some of the things I wanted to say since she was a pastor's wife. So after the service, I sat down and I told the husband God to show me. I said, look at what God said, look at what God said, look at what God said. And the man screamed and said, yes! That's the same thing that God told me. In the month of July, they came, to, they came visiting. They came with a seat. So they worshiped with us and then gave me a seat and I laid hands on them. And prayed for them. And on the first day of September, this September, the man called me. I said, Daddy, my wife is pregnant. <laughs> Jesus is a miracle worker. 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 You will do your own. Listen, I was watching a testimony of a pastor. The wife kept having miscarriages, miscarriages, miscarriages. Until the doctor advised them to remove the wound so that the wife would survive after the last miscarriage. He said, Pastor, if we don't do this miscarriage, your wife will die. So it's better we save your wife and we we'll take away her wound. The man said, Agreed. He signed it, they removed the wound. After some months, the woman began to fall sick. And began to fall sick. And began to fall sick. And the man said, what is wrong with you? I don't know. Go to the hospital. She went to that same hospital. They checked it. They said she was pregnant. Yeah. What science cannot do. That is what Jesus does. Science to make science know that 
before science, I was. Before medicine, I was. I am the I am that I am. I am the God of all possibilities. Is there anything too hard for me to do? They went to do operation. The doctor says, it's better we operate and remove the baby. And they went into operation. The doctor called the husband. He said, come and see what I'm seeing. When they opened the woman up, the husband came. God prepared a sack, a bag. And carried the package, the baby in a bag. Since there is no room, I organized a bag for her. I should deliver the bouncing baby more. I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Is there anything too hard for God to do? There is nothing that God cannot do. In Abba, if you go to assemblies of God mission, Abba, there is one reverend called Reverend Obosu Ejinu. He waited for years. More than 12, I think that more than 13 years, I'm not mistaken. When God came, twins first. He came back again. Twins again. <laughs> Reverend God of Lucy. Reverend God of Lucy. Reverend God of Lucy. Waited for years. When God came, three times. He came again, three times. <laughs> if you come to House on the Rock, Abba, House on the Rock, Abba, Reverend Ali Akibundu. He says, Pastor in Abba, house on the rock. They were waiting for years. When God came, God came with four children. Four. 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 At once. I don't know how long you have waited. I came to announce to you that in this meeting, your miracle is happening. Your miracle is happening. Your miracle is happening. You are a man and you are not functioning as a man, it means nothing. We have fruit of the womb service. Fruit of the womb service. In that service, God listed three women plus my wife. Our 14 years daughter was a product of that service. In that service, I told them to come and pick babies on the altar. And I'm talking now by prophecy. If you are believing God for children, come to the altar. Children are on this altar. If there is anybody you know that doesn't have a child, come and pick a child for that person. Come and come to this altar. If you don't have children, come and pick your children. If you are believing God for someone that needs children, come and pick children for them. There are children on this altar. Collect your all. If you want one, collect one. If you want two, collect two. If you want three, collect three. If you want four, collect four. Collect them. Collect them. Collect them, collect them, collect them. Receive your children, receive your children, receive your children. Reba ba ba ba, reba ba ba ba, reba ba 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 ba. In the name of Jesus, it is done. Receive your children. Go with your children and bring forth after nine months. In the name of Jesus. Now, in that service, in that service, I thank God for the people that are connected to it with their seed. In that service, that fruit of the whole service, three people were visited. Number one, let me start with myself, my wife. The power of God came on her and she fell under the anointing and slept for some time. When she woke up, the next month she missed her periods and two babies. So we are with one now. We are with one now. One of them will meet her when we will get to heaven. Hallelujah. In that service, a woman, Sister Kajibe, she said, the first pregnancy I hear. 
Second pregnancy, IVF. But this one, after this service, I became pregnant. It has never happened. That's Jesus to work. The third miracle was a woman that came and collected baby on the altar for her friend. After the service, she called her friend. I've collected baby for you from the altar. You see that? I don't have problems. It's my husband. You cannot sustain erection. She said, I don't care to know. My pastor said, I should come and pick baby. I'll pick baby for you. Whether it is your problem or your husband's problem, I don't know. According to the testimony, after some time, the man's body got, got strengthened like Abraham. He met his wife and she became pregnant. God is alive! God is alive! And he will do your miracle for you. In the name of Jesus. Number three, we'll be summarizing by exactly 7.30, so I will keep to time. Number three, sorrow in the life of Mephibo Shite was the sorrow of being connected to the wrong person. I feel like stopping the message, but <laughs> let me flow. The sorrow of being connected to the wrong person. Second Samuel 9, verse 2. The Bible said that Mephibo Shite had a caregiver or a nanny by name Ziba. His name was Ziba. When David asked him, is there anyone in the house of Saul that I might show kindness to him for Jonathan's sake? He said, yes, there is someone. His name is uh, Mephibosheth, but he is lame. On his feet. Hallelujah. What did he do? He tried to discredit Mephibosheth before his helper. Nobody asked him, is he lame or not? Nobody asked him. The question was, is there anyone in the house of Saul that I might show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? What should be the answer? Yes. Who is that person? But he said, his name is Mephibosheth. Uh, he's uh, lame. He's disqualifying me. Do you know that there are some of you that are having people connected to you that are the ones working against you? They are called enemies of progress. Any blessing that want to come, they will, discredit, they will discredit you before your helpers. They will disqualify you before your helpers. They are the reason behind the suffering. I was in a meeting where they were trying to transfer a very big pastor to a big church. His bosom friend was telling the senior pastor that this man is not charismatic. This man is too weak. He's too, he's too, too weak for my liking. A bosom friend. His qualifying friend that was suffering as a pastor somewhere. They wanted to help him and bring him to the city. Who is that one person connected to you? Do you know what the book of Micah 7 6 says? Micah 7 6 and Matthew 10 36. It says, A man's enemies are the members of his own household. That was where Sabi United they kill you. I can use our pity That's where they close to you. When you were where? Then they kill you. You feel like that kind of when, if you buy two with the blue breast, have you ever been eating that rat right before? The rat right will come with you. I don't know what that's for you to know you are a child. You ate food, you didn't wash your hand very well. And you woke up in the morning, you saw some wound in your hand. The rat right was busy eating your hand, and then when you want to wake up, it will begin to blow. <laughs> Hallelujah! That is how they are! That was how Ziba! Was to be devotion. Today, I separate you from every sinner around you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number four, sorrow. The fourth dimension of sorrow in the life of Mephibosheth was the sorrow of being covered with darkness. Second Samuel chapter 9, verse 4 to 5. The sorrow of being covered with darkness. The Bible says that Mephibosheth was living, living in Lodiba. He was living in Lodiba. And Lodiba symbolizes darkness. He was living in Lodiba. Hallelujah. A lot of people are covered with darkness. And if you are covered with darkness, you cannot be located. Darkness is the reason for the sorrows of many people. They are covered in darkness. But today, the light of God is coming in that darkness. 
I don't know the darkness that is covering you. The light of God is coming in that darkness. The reason why many people are struggling it is darkness. The reason why many young girls are not married, they are covered in darkness. But today, I dim out the light of God. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 3, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit moved upon the waters. And God said, let there be light. Light is coming in your darkness today. Every darkness around your life, around your business, the light of God is coming today. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 and 3. Isaiah 61 to 3. Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amen. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. And the Gentiles, the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Amen. So when your darkness gives way, Gentiles will come. Kings will come. I prophesy to you. Let Gentiles come. Let kings come. Let Gentiles come. Let kings come. Let Gentiles come. Let kings come. When they come, they will come with silver and gold in their hands. If that, what, that prophecy resembles your own, shout a better amen. In John chapter 1, verse 4 to 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Jesus is the giver of light. When he gives his light around you, you will begin to shine. I think in Psalm 39, verse 6, if I'm not mistaken, the Bible says, For with thee is the fountain of light. In the light shall we see light. Hallelujah. I remove the darkness around your life. Number five, sorrow. In the life of Mephibosheth was the sorrow of poverty. The sorrow of poverty. In 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 4 to 5, the Bible says Mephibosheth was living in Lodiba. He was living in Lodiba. And Lodiba means house of no pasture. That's Lodiba. House of no pasture. It means house of no bread, no food. So, he was surrounded with poverty. This was a royalty living in Lodiba inside abject poverty. Hallelujah. I don't know how to explain how Lodiba looks like, but have you ever lived in a slum, a slum area, in trenches? Get to right? Now, in every city, we have places like that. When I was in Lagos, I, I, I stayed in Lagos for seven years. There is this place called Ajekwale. Okay. Yeah. Ajay is like Lodiba. When I was in Anambra State, there is this place in Anambra State called Iowa Odek. Amen? It's a slum area, so it is like Lodiba. In Aba, in Aba, we have somewhere called Mbaro. Especially in your area. Those down there who are in Mbaro. It is like a Lodiba. I don't know the name you call it in Enugu, your own place. It will be somewhere like that. And we have it in every state. Hallelujah. Now, I apologize. My apologies to all the people living there. If you are living in such area, hearing me today, there shall be a transpiritation. There shall be a transpiritation. The Holy Spirit will transfer you from your Lodiba to Jerusalem. So Mephibosheth was living in Lodiba and God took him from Lodiba to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8, Psalms 1, 1, 3, verse 7 to 8. Media. 1 Samuel 2, 8. He rushed up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dung hill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the lost and he has set the world upon them. So no matter how poor you are, God has the capacity. 
God has a capacity to move you from poverty to prosperity. Amen. 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 And lifted up the needy out of the dumb. Don't miss any day tomorrow, shall be peace. That he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. God lifted up my feeble shirts from Lodiba and took him into royalty. Uh -huh. To sit as a royalty. Yes, he was destined as a royalty. But he found himself in Lodiba. And God brought him into Jerusalem. So no matter the lonely man you find yourself, God can move you to your Jerusalem. Amen. If you are the one God is talking to, shout amen. 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 Can I have 10 minutes to summarize? Can I have 10 minutes to summarize? Amen. I want to show you seven things God did for Mephibosheth. Number one. Seven things God did for Mephibosheth. Number one. God remembered him. Second Samuel chapter 9 verse 13. Is there, uh, chapter 1, sorry. Second Samuel 9, 1 and 3. Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I might show the kindness of God to him? God remembered Mephibosheth. That was why he laid it in the hands of David to go for him. God will remember you in this meeting. I said, God will remember you in this meeting. Number two, God raised destiny helpers for him. God raised destiny helpers for him. 2 Samuel 9, 1 and 3. David was his destiny helper. David was the destiny helper of Mephibosheth. Remember what he said in Isaiah 16, verse 3. He said, The Gentiles shall come, and kings shall come to the brightness of your reason. These are destiny helpers. Say, Oh God, wherever my destiny helpers are, I command them to locate me. Now listen. I want destiny helpers that are men of influence, that are vision bearers, that are vision sponsors, that are body bearers, that are gifted men, that are vision sponsors. Many of them, they are called vision helpers. Isaiah 4, verse, Isaiah 43, verse 4. Isaiah 43, verse 4. You will see God talking about giving men for your sake. For since that was precious in my sight, that has been honorable. I have loved it, therefore I will give men for thee. And people for thy life. I will give it's the death that will take you, it will take them. People for thy life. Hallelujah. Number three, God changed his story. Second Samuel chapter 9, verse 1, and then 3 to 5. God changed the story of Mephibosheth from non-entity into loyalty. In Lodiba, Mephibosheth was a non-entity. But God changed him into a royal, royalty and took him to the palace. Don't be surprised as you are here now struggling. What connection with God will take you to your palace? Amen. Two months ago, a pastor in Abraham who has been struggling, going through pains, going through challenges, God sent a man from the U.S. who came out giving a seed of one million dollars. What did I say? One million. Is it safe? One man. Do you know what it is? Huh? Almost a billion naira. Almost. About maybe eight point something. I mean eight hundred and something million or nine hundred and something. One visitation from God can turn a non entity into a sub entity. Can turn a hungry man into a palace man. That shall be your story. God is changing his story. Number four, God changed his location. Second Samuel chapter 9, verse 4 to 5. God changed his location from Lodiba to Jerusalem. You too. I change your location, both physical and spiritual. I change your location from living in the trenches, living in the ghetto, living in the slum, to living in GRE. 
to live in the state in two places to own in your properties in the name of Jesus. I check your location. I check your location. Number five, God change his status. God change his status. Second Samuel 9, 10 to 13. God change his status. He had the status of a non-entity. God changed him to a royalty. God changed him to prominence. So God is changing your status also. You have no name, God is giving you a name. Number six, God restored everything his family lost. In 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 7 to 9, God restored everything his family lost. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 7 to 9. Is it on the screen? Hallelujah. And then he said unto me, Fear not, for I will surely show the kindness of Jonathan thy father said, and I will restore to thee all the land of Saul thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. There was a total restoration. I declare total restoration. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 30 to 31, he said, Men will not despise the thief, even if he steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he is taught, he shall restore sevenfold. And he shall give all the substance of his house. In Joel chapter 2, verse 25, I will restore to you the years that the locusts, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, the great army has eaten, I will restore that back to you. I prophesy to you. Everything stolen by the devil from you, taken away from you, taken away from this commission. I declare total restoration, total restoration, total restoration, total restoration, total restoration. In the name of Jesus. And then number seven, finally, God moved him from sorrow to joy. So now Samuel, chapter 9, verse 11 to 13. In Lodiba, he was sorrowful. In Jerusalem, he became joyful. In Lodiba, he was hungry. In Jerusalem, he ate in plenty. In Lodiba, he was a non entity. In Jerusalem, he became a sub entity and a, a royalty. I understand what I'm saying. God moved him from sorrow to joy. In Esther 9 22, he said, You will turn your sorrow into joy. In John 16 20, he will turn your sorrow into joy. In, in Psalms 30 verse 5, weeping and yours at night. But John comes in the morning. In Psalms 30 verse 11, we read three more scriptures and pray. You can stand up with your Bible. Psalms 30 11, Jeremiah 31 13. Psalms 30 11, India, God bless you, God bless you, India. That was done for me, my morning into dancing. Are you ready to dance? That was put up my sacro and guided me with gladness. Are you ready to dance? Jeremiah 31 verse 13. Makana kata basada. Jeremiah 31 verse 13. I feel fire here. Jeremiah 31 verse 13. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance. Both young men and all together. For I will turn their morning into joy. I will comfort them. God will comfort you. God will comfort you. And make them rejoice from their sorrow. You are going to rejoice from your sorrow. I just hear in my spirit that it's going to be a miracle, a miracle can happen. To somebody, I see a miracle alert coming. A miracle alert coming. A miracle alert coming. Now listen, listen, listen. As you step into the month of October, the blessings will pursue you, the blessings will overtake you, the blessings will mesmerize you, it will mesmerize you. It will keep you confounded. Isaiah 51, 11. Isaiah 51, 11. Therefore, the redeemer of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. Somebody is returning tomorrow with singing. And everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy. And sorrow 
that have this commission, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. In the name of Jesus, say, my father, my father, every deformity in my life, deformity of sickness, deformity of disease, deformity of organ failure, in the name of Jesus, let the healing power take place in my life. I command every source of the deformity to catch fire. Of your mouth, I'm going to pray. And let brush that down. Let brush that down. Let brush that down. Let brush that down. My cafe of let brush that down. Let brush that down. Let brush that down. My neck of it. Let that brush that down. Let brush that down. Jesus. Say, my father, my father. Every wrong man. Every wrong woman, every wrong person around my life. Now listen, listen. A young man with the lady I wanted to marry, he prepared his document, got his visa, got his international passport, and was to travel. And his girlfriend or fiance took all the documents and hid it. He was to travel, she hid it. And you know what? The most annoying thing, she kept carrying him from one church to another church. What was the problem? Is missing the passport and the visa. Why she was the one that had it? When they came to one of those churches that she took him to, the man of God by the Spirit told her, told him, that do you want to know who holds your passport and your visa? He said, I want to know. He said, where is the girl you want to marry? We call her and she came. The man of God said, Tell him what you know about the visa. She's with your visa. She's with your international passport. And yet she was very close to him. The wrong person. Any wrong person that is making you to suffer, that is carrying you from one shrine to the other, carrying your family, your business, from one altar to the other. Hey, yeah, let them die by fire. Let them die by fire. Let me pray for you. I'm supposed to 
to be giving out if you're handing over the microphone now. Let me pray for you. Before I pray these prayers, I want to pray for those that want to give their lives to Jesus. I don't play with this. If you have not given your life to Jesus, forget about joy. Forget about celebration. The life of sorrow will be your permanent position. But that shall be, not be your portion. Say this prayer after me. You are watching us online on Facebook. You are watching us on YouTube. You are watching us in any of the channels. Say this prayer after me. And Jesus will give you your miracle. This task is not in Maria. Any country you are watching us from, from Italy, from Germany, from Spain, from, from Spain, from Finland, wherever you are watching us from, from Abia State, Enugu State, Lagos State, anywhere, say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender unto you. Come into my life. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive my sins. Wash me with thy precious blood. Accept me in the blood. Cleanse me with thy blood. And give me grace to serve you. In Jesus' precious name. If you pray this prayer, let me pray for you. I declare you born again. I declare you washed, cleansed, and accepted in the blood. I separate you from sin. I separate you from darkness. I separate you from the devil. And I hand you over to God. Receive grace to serve God. In Jesus' precious name. Spend for time, let me pray for you. Miracles are already happening. Please, if there is one outstanding miracle that we can take, please let the ushers know. Maybe he in those two places. Because as I'm preaching, all sides is going. HIV is going, hepatitis is going, oh, uh, ulcer, high blood pressure. Whatsoever the sickness is, receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. I re release children in your womb. If you cannot see, if you are having a blood vision, begin to see clearly. If you cannot see, begin to see. If your ear cannot hear, begin to hear. If you are having form of deformity, receive the healing power of God. I rebuke infirmity. Receive the healing power of God. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. Are you healed? If you know that Jesus has healed you, shout a very amen. If you know that you know that you know that Jesus has healed you, shout a very amen. To take a testimony, but if there is no time tomorrow, we want to take your testimony. So come early and share your testimony. Some of you, as you are going, miracles are happening in your sleep. Jesus will appear to you, miracles will happen to you. Others will be changed. Sorry, daddy. I know you know the story of your son, Roji. He we repented of that. Heat. He was in Ebenato when he was sick. And the diagnosis two kidneys failed too. We couldn't eat. He was just dying. We couldn't preach. He left the altar. The church members carried him to where I was pastoring to come and stay with me. They were bringing food, plenty of food for him. I can't eat. They would bring a lot of food, meat, chicken. He was not eating, so I was assisting his witnesses. The Bible said, He that are strong. To help the infirmity of the weak. So I was happy to clear. He said something. He said, if nobody survived kidney failure, I will survive it. He said, if I die, I know that I'm in hell. One night, Jesus came in a dream, did operation on him, took away the two damaged kidneys, and replaced them with two new kidneys. He's alive, he's preaching now. Sleep, Jesus will visit you and heal you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you are watching us from, healing is meant to you. You are healed in the name of Jesus. We are going to give our seed. We are not taking offering tonight. Pick a seed and come to the altar. Pick a good seed and come to the altar. Rush, 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 rush. Pick a good seed and come to the altar and drop it. Pick a good seed and rush to the altar. Rush to the altar. Rush to the altar. Rush to the altar with your seed. Come and drop it, drop it on the altar. Drop it on the altar, drop it on the altar. Drop it on the altar. Drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. Drop it on the altar. Drop it on the altar. As you are dropping it, you are getting connected to the miracles. You are getting connected to the blessing. You are getting connected to the favor of God. You are getting connected to open heaven. Drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. You are dropping your sorrow, you are dropping your poverty, you are connecting to the blessing.
You are connected to the favor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody. Is somebody blessed? You know, uh, the man of God just came just waiting for some few minutes to the commencement of the service. He has not even had any rest and uh, even to refresh himself. You know, why am I saying this? That I will not be flat today. Can okay, come at it tomorrow? By the time we will give you more money on it. If you miss all those programs, you have missed all. I know you will not miss it. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And God, please come up and pray for us before we go. He's the one record for today. They just mm-hmm. um, one thing I want to say is prepare your hearts tomorrow as you're coming. You can fast tomorrow. Fast coming. You can fast tomorrow, fast coming. And make sure you're coming here with someone. Look for someone you're going to come with. Don't come alone. Come with at least one person. At least one person. And the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we'll give you praise. Thank you for such a wonderful, wonderful meeting we've had with you tonight. Thank you for such an awesome presence which you've made manifest in this place. We return all the praise to you. As we go, Lord, we go in thy strength, we go in thy mind. We go in thy peace. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the servants which you've used to bless our lives. Lord, we ask that you replenish him. Bless him hundredfold. The strength that has gone out of him, Father, we ask that it be replenished. His anointing will be doubled. And when he stands here to speak tomorrow, he speaks the mind of God. He speaks your mind for us. In the name of Jesus. Be that glorified. Be thou exalted, for in Jesus' much less name of pray. Amen. Amen. Can we say the grace that I pray you? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, and the sweet blessing of the Holy Spirit, and my that which goes down forevermore. Amen. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom.